I always thought the bandit buck's icon was a slice of pizza. No, it's bandit's face. It's bandit's face when he was uh, covered in snow when we were out in the middle of the woods in the winter. Because <laughs> there was one day when the mountain shut down. So my neighbor and I were like, well, we both have the day off. I guess let's have a beer and walk the dogs in the snow. That's literally what happens, because usually the power goes out, too, so it was like there's nothing to do inside. Anyways, let's talk about some hots, everybody. We are here in our map number one of our third best of three of the day. Winner of the series goes on to the grand finals, which is up next. Up next is the grand finals. And uh, we do have some housekeeping. We just talked about the bounty, so we're not going to go through all that again. Uh, I think the vast majority of people heard that explanation. But we do. We, the one thing we didn't talk about is the draft style. Heroes can only be picked and played once per series. Bands at the top of the screen don't add to that list. There's no pre-bans for the tournament either. So let's say Brightwing is first picked in this game, or let's say Blaze is first picked in this game, which is not uncommon. Blaze will not be allowed in maps two or th excuse me, in maps two or three. I forgot to get T during all that. Oh well, we'll make it work. So maps two or three, uh, Blaze couldn't be played. But of course, if Jahan is not banned in maps two or three, she can be picked. It's just the uh, the bans only pertain to the current map draft. Now we're heading to Infernal Shrines. I don't believe we've seen an Infernal Shrines map yet today. There was, uh, let's see, Gaff is on the right, right? Yeah, so the dudes banned away the special map, so no Haunted Mines or anything like that, and Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh, Crankle Crew banned away Sky Temple and Towers of Doom. So first pick went over to the side of the dudes, and map choice and frontal shrines coming out from Crankle Crew. I hope that catches you up as to how we got here and all that good stuff. Who is missing from the dudes? Swamp is subbing, right? Um, let's see. The core roster for the dudes for this qualifier is Nano, Gaff, Blood, Ultralisk, and, and Uki. And uh, there's a D there's a DNP for Nano and Uki. So Swamp Grotta is definitely a sub. And Ixer as well. Is that right? Ixer? Yeah, Ixer, Ixer and Swamp Grotta are the subs here. Hopefully that, that explained everything. What's up, Captain Jack Slater? Hanzo Diablo on the left-hand side. Okay, all right. Hanzo Diablo. Big initiation. Big burst. Nice for Infernal Shrines. Wave clear at level 4 for Hanzo with Explosive Arrow. Uh, I wonder if we'll get, like, a Genji with that. There, There's the Blaze first pick, by the way. Big surprise on that one. Wow. <laughs> Junkrat Muradin to be grabbed. Okay. All right. So, poker on the objective. You got some control. You got follow-up uh, into the Stormbolt or Jet Propulsion with vice versa. Steel Traps in the double rotation from mid to bottom, as well as the Concussion Mines. So overall, good start of the starting draft for the side of the dudes. Thanks. You're welcome. Now, please subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget, chat, if you have Amazon Prime, you've got Prime Gaming. And if you use your Prime Gaming here, Stone Cold Steve Austin will show up and do a Stone Cold Stunner to Jeff Bezos from the roof of his house. And that's the bottom line, because Bahamut said so. <laughs> Sergeant Amber is going to be banned here on the left-hand side, so no, no hammer shenanigans this game. Uh, maybe an Anduin ban? Like, Light Bomb Diablo is pretty good. Light Bomb Genji's available as well. Really? You banned the best... Really? Uh, for those of you that are, are new to the stream, I am a very big proponent for Cho'Gall. And I am very sad that it's banned away. Steve Austin or Jeff Bezos' house? So so Stone Cold Steve Austin will show up at Jeff Bezos' house and Stone Cold Stunner Jeff Bezos off the roof of Jeff Bezos' house. Into a pool, because we would never kill anyone. Into a pool. Uh-oh. Connecting to chat. Connecting to chat? Why am I connecting to chat? All right, there we go. Uh, but, but wait, but, but, what? Asmodan? I'm also a big fan of Asmodan. Uh, and that's the second time we're seeing Asmodan today. Hanzo, Diablo, Leoric, Rhaegar. Uh, they, they could look for the Genji if they wanted to just go Shimada Bros. I would love to see a mage here. 
like or this is the one map where we do see Orphea pop up. Uh, Kael'thas wouldn't be too bad. They also could risk it and go for a gambit here, or not a gambit, a bounty hero. So one team would be winning a bounty. It could be Hunt Illidan. It could be Hunt Illidan. Give me two seconds to check the. Oh uh, no, it, it can't. It can't be Hunt Illidan. The dudes have no. The dudes have already done Hunt Illidan. Crankle Crew has done Triple he Healer and Alex Straza Stitches. So one of these teams could potentially get a bounty, depending, of course, if Illidan goes into Hunt. I assume he will, but let's see what happens. All right, so we're going to Infernal Shrines. Let's get your Twitch prediction going here. We have Crankle Crew versus the Dudes. Five minute prediction. Get them on in. And I need to get a cup of tea after this game. I have nothing to drink. Watch this game be like 30 minutes long. That's that's always the that's always the case. All right. As a reminder, after this map, we will be rolling our next giveaway from Corsair. So if you have not gotten your giveaway uh, keyword into chat, be sure to do so. All right. Map number one in the second semifinal of the day. Winner of this series goes into the grand finals. Up next, we have a Marl Karks going to be playing your Hanzo. Here on the... Illidan, we've got a Jordan, yeah, Jordan Leoric, Deviant Rhaegar, and a big ol' Porky on Merfolk Diablo. And no one unlocked the sword. Uh, if you don't know, left click on this in your games. Left click on the sword in your games. On the right hand side, it's the dudes with a Swamp Grotta Blaze, Gaff playing Muradin, Bloodcool is your Junkrat, Ixer is gonna be playing Ana, and Ultralisk will be. Asmodan. We've got a target practice Hanzo. Maybe. Just maybe. Just maybe. He'll take Flawless Technique at level 20 or level 16. A man can dream. A man can dream. But I really think that he's taking this level 1 so he's got the 30% range increase. He can poke at some of these uh, decently ranged heroes with Asmodan and Junkrat in the rotations. I don't know if Murden's... Murden... I was gonna say, I don't know if he's gonna step up a ton. He's going to land a Storm Bolt, and yeah, just some poke damage in the rotation. So, yeah, I don't think we're going to see any major team fights at the start. Oh, he is anchoring aggressively. Asmodan working through stackage. Did go Gluttony level 1. So, you're increasing the Annihilation stacks against enemy heroes from 2 to 4. And after you get the 200 stacks and finish this out, you'll have a 0.25 second cooldown on your Globe of Annihilation per enemy minion hit. And then you, it's doubled against enemy heroes, so you get half a second of cooldown against enemy heroes. And if I remember correctly, I always forget, it's like uh, 12 seconds for Globe of Annihilation. 10 seconds, 10 seconds. You'd think I would know this, but uh, there's so many numbers to remember in a MOBA. At least we don't have an item shop. Stormbolt, good concussion mine. The cleanse comes out late from Rhaegar, but I don't think it's a big deal because Porky can shadow charge over to this camp in bottom lane. Illidan cure getting low. Muradin needs one auto. Stormbolt, dunk, Junkrat. First blood over to the side of the dudes. How are we doing on our gamble here, chat? 12,000 to 1,600. I think you can do better. First Punisher will be Mortar in the top lane. Delaying out some ads there for a little bit longer. Sixty stacks for our Asmodan. Did go into Battleborn level one. You get some cooldown reduction with the auto attacks for your summonables. Concussion mine. Just poking the Hanzo here. Speaking of Hanzo, he's currently got one stack finished out. Let's take a look here really quickly and see who he's got to hit. Blaze three times. He's got to hit uh, Junkrat once as well, just to get that thirty percent range increase. Cure Illidan. Yeah, anti-heal and attack speed reduction is a big one. Reverberation is is the is the big factor in level four for, for Muradin, but doesn't seem like Illidan struggled in that team fight right there. Takes down Muradin one to one and kills. 
Uh, reverberation, by the way, increased the attack speed slow of Thunderclap from 30 to 50% and the duration from 2.5 to 3.5, but also you get a 5% cooldown on your heroic for that Thunderclap as well. Now, obviously, there's no heroics picks, so that won't be affected until about four levels from now. I don't... I I'm kind of wondering if we get a Haymaker game. I think it'll be Avatar, but I like the idea of Haymaker into Diablo who wants to heavy dive, into Illidan who wants to heavy dive. I think uh, Haymaker could be a wonderful opportunity to create some space for allies who are getting dove on. But we'll have to see, because it, right now it really seems like the dive is coming through from the dudes as Diablo lands a Shadow Charge into the sidewall right there. Jordan on this Illidan over nearly 50% of the Skeletal Defenders grabbed. He didn't go Neil Peasants level 4, picked up that Paralyzing Rage, so increases his slow from 30 to 60% now. Or no, from 30 to 50%, sorry. His baseline slow is 30%. I trust Kira to pull off the Illidan. But what about his ping? Oh my god. The Dragon Hunger's level 7? Flawless technique is a possibility. Flawless technique is a possibility. No one saw Kyrg die in mid lane. The Mortar Punisher does go over to the side of uh, the Crankle crew. Ultralisk is just heavy pushing bottom. As he does go Bombardment level 7. So after that Globe of Annihilation, more uh, auto attacks will fire out. And this is very synergistic with the level 4 as well. Since you're having triple autos, you're getting triple cooldown from Battleborn. Uh, usually I take this 4 and 7 with, uh, Wrath level 1, but, I mean, Gluttony, it, with Gluttony, it's, it, it's fine as well. It's just Wrath, of course, you know, the triple bombardment after landing a dunk, after getting your 200 stacks, or the increased crit damage on autos is pretty nice. But, Asmodan wants the cooldown, he wants faster stackage as well, keep that in mind. You're getting 4 stacks from enemy heroes instead of 2 now. And we're waiting for our 10 Talent Tears to pop up at the top of the screen, so let's go ahead and cycle through the other numbers, get an idea of what the damage, healing, and experience looks like for these two teams. Also, as a reminder, we have Discord Movie Night this Friday, if you are interested. If you'd like to join the Discord Exclamation Discord, we're watching Major Pain! And Gaff is going to be able to steal away the camp. Oh, there goes the Junkrat as well. Leoric finding the kill. And he's able to Dwarf Toss away. Oil Slick thrown down from Blaze, trying to slow down Diablo's initiation, but it's still Illidan running down Muradin, finding the kill. Diablo is full on souls, and he's about to have reduced soul consumption in about an eighth of a level. Fallen Shaman in top lane pushing up, but Swamp Grout is here to clear that away. Dragon's Arrow, hunt for Illidan. So one of these teams is claiming a bounty at the end. Somebody's getting a bounty here. Lightning Breath and Tomb and Sister Healing. Haymaker for Muradin. My theory was not wrong. And uh, honestly, it, it, like I actually really like the Haymaker ID here for, for so much of that uh, dive damage. Haymaker onto the Diablo as he's split from his team. Shadow charges right back in. The Hunt from the Illidan as Lightning Breath gets a 360 Flame. Porky getting the Ancestor Healing. The All Shell Burn tickling Porky's health bar. But Muradin goes down. Asmodan's done with stackage. He did go into Tide of Sin at level uh, 10 here. Got a Riptire Junkrat, Eye of Horus on the Ana, and Bunker for Blaze. I don't see. Do the do the skeletal defenders count? Because. It j actually, it just says enemy hit by Globe of Annihilation. It doesn't say minion. Okay, yeah. It doesn't specify if it if it needs to be a minion or a hero. So I guess it could be minions, mercenaries, or monsters. I kind of like the idea of the Nano for the Junkrat or even the Asmodan, but... Uh, I believe this Ana player consistently goes Eye of Horus and gets really good value with it, don't get me wrong. Nice little scatter off the wall right there. Hanzo finishing out his second stack off of Blaze, finally. Take a look here really quickly, see what he's got. He's got to hit Ana, Asmodan, and Junkrat twice, but he does have the 30% range increase from hitting every enemy hero once. A 
So Illidan manages bottom. He's got Hunt available. Asmodan. There's going to be fire on laser. I like that. Biter grenade onto Porky right now. The auto attack's raining in. And Eye of Horasana comes through. There was a Dragon's Arrow I thought I heard from Hanzo. Yeah, it is on cooldown. 63 seconds of 70. And, uh, all right. Asmodan, he was dunking out in bottom lane, clears things out. I saw a big jump in his, uh, Annihilation stackage. Illidan, autoing onto those sidewalls for cooldown reduction. Jet Propulsion from Blaze into the Leoric, lands the Skeletal Swing. And he's actually gonna go into Spectral Leech at level 13. Ana with some, some sleep darts coming out. Borky split from his team. 32 souls, and he's gonna get dunked away. Junkrat with the last little bit of damage coming through. And it's looking good for the dudes here in map number one. Four to four in kills as Murden Stormbolt finds Jordan on the Leoric, but he's able to Wraith walk away. No big deal on that one. Uh, by the way, Illidan is gonna go six cents. Oh, would you look at that? Thank you, thank you, I, for the Prime Gaming for 19 months. I appreciate that greatly. A lot of places you can use your Prime. Thanks for choosing here. Fish just jumped right up on the boat. So, Siege in the mid lane. Leoric is trying to harass onto Ana on the top right of our screen, but we do have Junkrat coming through as well. Able to uh, displace. There is a lightning breath from Diablo the Entomb from Leoric. They're cooking up Muradin, but they don't. Oh, they do take him down. I think it was uh, Tower Shots actually tracked after him. Uh, mid lane fort does go down. First structure to fall, favoring the members of the dudes, but that Muradin kill is a little unfortunate there. 373 baseline stacks. As Diablo is seen walking into all of this. Asmodan dunking, autoing. Concussion mine on the point. Porky split. Here comes Kier. A rip tire from Junkrat point blank. Kier tries to dive onto him. Concussion mine allows Ultralis to pick up this camp. Kier jumps over to the minion wave, and that'll be the end of the engagement. Though I don't think these impalers will find much value. With the enemies around and bottom, they should be cleared away. Hanzo. Three quarters of a level to go for him to pick the correct level 16, as he is uh, three out of the five stacks for target practice. Dunks from Asmodan, 397. Needs uh, one dunk onto an enemy hero just to be able to finish this out. Did go British Vanguard level 13. I'm a big fan of uh, Hellgate level 16 for the s be being able to get the uh, crit kickers and the extra summon. Oh, that's unfortunate. There you go. Blaze helped out with the Twin Flames. We'll see what Ultralisk goes into. Is it Thick Strike? Oh my god, why? He's going Thick Strike. And we have a Piercing Arrow. Oh my god. Shadow Charge on to Blaze. Good Fire Stomps coming out from Diablo. Picking up a bit of Solage from the level 4 Soul to Flame. More dunks from Asmodan as Bandit had a really stinky fart. <laughs> He's so gassy, man. He's so gassy. Little laser action from Asmodan, but Porky will not fall. Illidan in top lane, pushing things up, but our Junkrat's here to push back against him. Thick strike, really? Oh, Ultralisk is not gonna get interrupted from his heart. The Haymaker onto Porky. Deviant uh, Rhaegar is tanking a couple tower shots. And Tomb from Leoric onto Ana. Hunt from Illidan. Lightning Breath as well. And a little easy bake oven action. Build and jumping in for some extra seasoning. Dunks from Asmodan are pretty good. Junkrat comes in with a concussion mine. That's a Dragon's Arrow from Hanzo trying to create some space, but Jordan goes down. A Riptire from Junkrat trying to get in front of the Rhaegar to blast him back towards the allies, but it doesn't look like the focus is going to be Rhaegar's. Porky does go down. Souls to be expended. And Murden, Dwarf, launching in with that level 16. Unable to close the distance for a uh, for an extra kill. Bandit Fart should be redeemable. Please, no. As I said yesterday, he's, uh, the food that he has right now is salmon-based, and so his farts are very stinky. Illidan trying to dip, dive, and dodge around. He gets the cleanse. The dunk from Asmodan doesn't connect, but the auto attack does. And Ultralisk thick strikes away. It's trampable. We call it thick strike. 
because Asmodan's a thick boy. Dunk, not gonna be able to take down the Hanzo. Lays inside of this Entomb, does he have a bunker available? Nope, it looks like it was just used. Active reload for our Ana. Gets a few charges on her healing dart and is able to burst heal on to Blades. <laughs> Objective phase started, Asmodan dunks in and takes down all skeletal defenders. And he's gonna do it again. Oh no, not, not completely. Dragon's Air from Hanzo, but a Junkrat Concussion Mine pushes back Leoric. Nice answer from Junkrat. Murden, Dwarf tosses in, looking for the Stormbolt onto this Hanzo. Uses the natural agility to get away. 13 to 15, and Skeletal Defenders favoring the side of the dudes. Rhaegar is bad, Asmodan good. I would agree. Who needs heals when you can just kill the enemy? More dunks coming in. Nine Skeletal Defenders needed. Actually, less than that. Asmodan looking to back away. Blaze activates Stim. And another dunk going into the objective area. Picks up the Frozen Punisher for the side of our red squad. The Eye of Horus from Ana trying to get some extra heals. Junkrat's able to trade at least. Uh, you know, you can't be too upset about that. At least you take down the Illidan. Yeah, I agree, Captain Jack Slater. Absolutely. A very, very, very good Ana player here. Speaking of, Ana able to jump inside the bunker. Jordan is uh, was looking for the backline dive, but he's going to be taken down here. Asbadan will not have the dunk, but he's got the... Oh, no, it's Ana. Oh, it's Ana. Damage over time will take down Leoric. Nicely done. Triple kill over the side of the dudes as they are looking to rampage through bottom lane. Rampaging through bottom, getting a, a wonderful value. A dunk into mid lane just to clear out the wave and push that up a little bit faster. I don't think there's a catapult available, but there is one coming up, and it looks like Asmodan has buffed out that wave as well. All right, Kyrilidin is respawned. 20 seconds, or less than that, 15 seconds for Hunt to be available. And they want to confirm keep in bottom lane. Consistent catapult pressure with no matching or periodic. As the forward and bottom is still up and available. Junkrat soaking things up in top. 20 talents here on the right. Of course, we have Pride for the Asmodan. Cannon bowls on our Junkrat. Ana with the Armored Stance, Fortified Bunker, and Rewind from Uridan. Half a level to go for 20 on the side of Crankle Crew. As we wait patiently to see what they'll pick up and how they'll grab this. Explosive Arrow from afar, allowing the easy wave clear and safe wave clear. Piercing Arrow also getting the double explosion with the Explosive Arrow level 4. Uh, let's see, who's Hanzo got a hit? I bet it's uh, Blaze once. Junkrat once. Junkrat needs to be hit once. Mm -hmm. Lior takes a bit of damage there in bottom lane, but he's got the Wraith walk out. Ripper Air from Junkrat allowing him to get around the map a little bit faster. Oops, sorry about that. Cure Hearthing out, because it looks like Illidan's out of mana completely. No, he's probably just getting into a better position. Uh, he did go for the upgrade on the hunt, so now it is a global. He literally is an unlimited range, and he also sees hero heroes below 25% health anywhere on the battleground. Bullseye for the Hanzo, Buried Alive, Hellgate Diablo, and Farseer's Blessing. Nothing really crazy to note. Nothing super crazy to note, but the members of uh, Frankel Crew, they really gotta turn up the heat. Haven't taken down a structure. Struggling against the Asmodan composition. And this is just this is just point and case. More Asmodan should be played. Case and point. Set it backwards. <laughs> All right. Well, Elden taking the safe uh, route through bottom. Okay, he's just gonna soak up the wave. Haymaker onto Porky right there. Hellgate away. Biter grenade was used as well, and a minion. He's able to shadow charge through a dunk from Asmodan. Leoric with the Wraith walk out. Does have the buried alive, but there's no uh, there's no call to turn things around as Porky. With 94 souls, will hearth out for full. So will Leoric as well. And next objective should be announced fairly soon in the top lane. Will be a Mortar Punisher. Fallen Shaman pushing in. The, the dunk from Asmodan with the Titus Sin amplification is going to chunk the Hanzo by nearly 50%. Illidan in mid lane. He's going to be fine. He's got the keep front gate to retreat to. 
And there's the activation of the shrine. It's like I cast this game a ton. Shadow charge once again. There's a fire stomp from Diablo. Con a jet propulsion from Blaze. There's the hunting from Illidan onto on in the back line. The concussion mine creates a bit of space. The dragon's arrow goes to the side because EU arrows never miss. We have an ultra list inside the entomb, but he doesn't care. He's just going to dunk out onto Leoric and find the kill. I have Horus from Ana activated. The self cast ancestral onto Deviant with the Farseer's blessing upgrade. Trying to splash some of that healing to the allies around. As Junkrat uses Concussion Mind to head to the north side of the map and gonna start working on that min wave and objective area while Illidan clears out bottom lane catapults that have arrived near where the core keep used to be. I got, it's it's looking a little difficult for Crankle Crew. 7 to 11 in kills. And Crankle Crew have not taken down a single structure. They still have one fort available in this top lane, but. With the current pacing and trajectory, it's looking like the dude should grab this. Now, Liork can cheat death, and he can also respawn on the battleground. So it's not like they have to wait for the rotation. Muradin getting pushed around. There's a Buried Alive with Diablo inside. The Asmodan dunk. There's the Lightning Breath. Breath Gaff is able to Dwarf Toss away, activates the Rewind, and gets the second Dwarf launch. Sleep Dart onto this uh, Liork as he's getting so chunked. The Thick Strike comes through from Asmodan, and I do believe Trample just took down that Leoric. Uh-oh. Rhaegar goes down as well. It's uh, looking a little rough here for the side of... Crankle Crew is the dunk from Asmodan, and the help of Junkrat will take down Illidan as well. A triple kill. They're going to rampage through this top lane fort, and Junkrat and friends will back away and grab objective. Uh, it was it was Leoric, right? But I want to see something here. Yeah, there it is. Trample overkill. There it is. There was a trample overkill. Front page? No, people just finally discovered my Twitch channel. I'm finally famous. Just don't look at my viewer count tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the front page today, Fergus. How you doing, bud? We've just finally made it on Twitch. Is that another trample kill? Was that another trample kill? Punisher jumping. Okay, goodbye, Hanzo. And Hanzo will lose his souls, if you did not know. Apparently, Hanzo has souls to expend, but that's a very low Muradin, but he's fine. He's going to get inside the bunker. Asmodan going to try and take down this Leork with an all-shell burn, and will be able to do so. Riptire from Junkrat into Kier. There's going to be the Ancestor healing a little too late. Deviant will be taken down as well. Porky getting the slam into the wall. And it looks like uh, they're not going to go for a Porky kill. Just going to look to end map number one here. The dudes. The dudes will... Okay! Finland! To wrap up map number one. GG, well played. What is Murky Cup? Murky Cup is a grassroots Heroes of the Storm tournament that... Uh, that goes over about eight or so weeks. Uh, we have three weeks of qualifiers, two qualifiers per week. And then we also have uh, the playoffs, which I believe are four weekends. So I think it's five weeks actually. Or not four weekends, but um, two weekends, uh, both Saturday and Sunday. Draft is here, we're ready to go, and uh, on the left-hand side, I apologize, we have the Crankle crew, on the right it's the dudes, we're heading to Battlefield of Eternity, so we're keeping it thematic, we're keeping it thematic here, as it is going to be another Diablo map, we were just on Infernal Shrines, the members of the dudes claimed victory, and they claimed the Asmodan bounty, so there's that, uh, if you'd like to know a, a list of the bounties or a list of what bounties have been completed, you can use exclamation bracket, that'll take you over to the Liquipedia, and that Liquipedia is going to explain everything you need to know about uh, bounties and all that good stuff, as well as the upcoming qualifiers. And as a reminder, if you're having fun, uh, be sure to follow the channel. Uh, who won earlier? Gato did. That, 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 was, that, was, that was the second uh, giveaway right there. That was the second giveaway, so we just need Pan to message me in Twitch or Discord. Hopefully they did see, hopefully they did see. Uh, but either way, we still have another giveaway that'll be at the end of the uh, Grand Finals, which is up next. Boo these dudes, yeah, I saw the Shogal ban. 
I saw the Cho'Gall ban. How unfortunate. What a sad day. What an absolutely sad day. Lucio Maev, we've got a Cho ban, boo. Yurel banned, yay. <laughs> Blaze has already been played, so he cannot be picked again here. Uh, first pick, Vala. Okay, that's, I mean, it doesn't show a ton of the draft. You can have different, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of different uh, directions you can go. Could go Q build, could go into auto build. Doubtful on W. Who has fun in a hot stream? Uh, people who watch my hot stream. Those are the people that have fun. Congrats, winners. Yeah, there still is another giveaway, though. We are giving away, up next, we're giving away an M.2 drive. Uh, so we're going to be giving away this right... Oh, I don't have a capture on this. Uh, I don't have a button capture. There you go. M.2 drive, uh, one terabyte. It also It is also ca uh, compatible with PS5. Uh, I have actually put one of these in my PS5. It's super easy to install. And uh, so if you're like, oh, I have enough storage space on my computer. Well, if you have a PS5, you can put it in there. Or you can just put it in your computer and have a terabyte of M.2 speed. Uh, if we hit a thousand subs, Kaimo, sure. Are they juice pirating? Are they about to juice pirate this? W build is the secret meta for BOE. Oh, is it? It's so secret, no one knows. It's so secret, no one even knows. Hot's casting by Baja is always a good time. Thank you, I appreciate it. I hope you're all enjoying the stream today. I, I'm I'm honored to be able to be on front page, and it's really cool that it worked out with this tournament, so we could get some some good eyes on some Heroes of the Storm. And yeah, I, like if you enjoy the commentary, if you if you're having a good time, drop a follow. I, I, we stream six days a week. I only take Mondays off because I like to burn the candle at both ends and destroy my my. Uh, I like to I like to burn myself out as quickly as possible in the week. Uh, but we have a bunch of fun streams. Uh, Fridays, we typically do Suffering. So, uh, well, we've also been doing Street Fighter. So Street Fighter and uh, we're playing Demon Souls. Thursdays is typically casting and something else. Uh, Tuesdays is typically a little bit of hots and something else. Wednesdays, we often do uh, like like um, speed runs and stuff. But lately, since we've had this tournament on Wednesdays, we've been doing that. Uh, it's, it's, just been a, it's, it's, it's a really fun place. We do cooking streams. We do Baja Rosses. Uh, do, does, do I have a hyperlink for the last Baja Ross? There you go. If you want to see the last Baja Rosses I did, you can you can click that link. Um, safe link. It's a, it's just, I think it's just a, literally a link to my Twitter when I post. Yep. Uh, oh, that's not even the last one. Uh, I didn't even I didn't even make a new link for the new one. But anyways, yeah, we have a lot of fun here, so uh, be sure to follow and stick around. So Garrosh, Li Ming, Deckard, and Chen. Do like those couple picks so far. Could still look into something auto attacky like a gray main to round out that draft uh, for dive. I don't think it's juice pirates. I don't think it's juice pirates. I think they're gonna they're gonna stim uh, Vala or Kerosene. But triple healer composition being attempted by the dudes. We'll see if they can land it. Or. Maybe, just maybe, we'll head into the illustrious ever so sought after map number three. All right, Twitch predictions up. I liked it when you called it Challenge Friday. Did I, did I ever call it Challenge Friday, really? I mean, Demon Souls, knock on wood, has not been much suffering. I've been having fun in Demon Souls. Or Demon's Souls. Makes me think we're... Yeah, I mean, I mean like, I definitely can see the opportunity for Juice Pirates here. But I kind of feel like they just stim the Vala and, and try and win with that. Either way, left-hand side of the map, Crankle Crew down in this best of three series, trying to take us to a map number three. We've got Cure on Li Ming with his... Uh, I was going to say illustrious horse. I can't remember. It's it's the horse that he always uses. Marl Karks is going to be your Zul Jin. we got a Jordan, Garrosh, Deviant on the Deckard, and Chen to be played by Porky. Right side of the map, we've got the dudes with Swamp Grata playing Sonya. Blood on the Morales. 
We got an Ixer, Karazim, Gaff will be your Vala, and Ultralis playing Stukov. Just try Owl and Baha's chat or Healer. Just don't do Kaimo cleanses, please. It, it gives me a bad name. <laughs> Garrosh with the groundbreaker right there onto Karazim, who just starts raining in punches onto the Zul'jin, who does have the Recklessness level 1. He's already got two stacks. Decker Kane with the Sapphire, Freshest Ingredients Chen, Fetid Touch level 1 for our Stukov. Basic attacks, by the way, become ranged and slow enemies by 20% for 1.5 seconds, but deal 35% less damage. It's a toggleable effect as Garrosh lands another Groundbreaker. He went into Unrivaled Strength level 1. No Warbreaker. No Body Check. I was actually kind of thinking we maybe see Body Check just for some healing debuff. I know there are three healers, but, uh, you know, Body Check is a low cooldown. Groundbreaker toss into Karazim. Scroll of Ceiling from Decker Kane. The healing pathogen is pretty good. The healing beam from Morales comes through. And Cure blinks forward looking for those magic missiles. Only landing an arcane orb into the fort front gate. How are we doing on gambles? 9,600 to 42,000. All right, big gambles. Apologies. Morales goes down and bottom. A skimming Twitch chat. of ceiling with the sapphire applied. Zul'jin's already on 10 stacks, chat. And you were like, Bahamut, why is that so big of a deal? Because that's actually 55 stacks. He's actually at 11. He's, he's on 55, because it's uh, every five basic attacks permanently increase the basic attack damage by one. But uh, still, a lot of really good reckless value early on. Why is this a big deal? Because that's 75 stacks, or 15... You get a 1.1 range increase, so you go from 5.5 range to 6.6. .6. And then at 150, you get the double revolve on the cleave. And this, by the way, is a uncapped stacking quest, meaning you can go beyond the 30. All right, Zul'jin starts raining and axes into Karazim, a groundbreaker coming through. Vala auto attack stacks on 25, fetid touch on 12 of 15. What's the reward again? Is it, is it just a cooldown reduction? Reduce the cooldown of weighted push by five seconds and remove the mana cost. And the baseline cooldown for uh, weighted push is 10 seconds. So you're basically halving that. Nice. Zul'jin's got his range increase at 16 stacks already. And we're three minutes in. The Immortals will spawn. Uh, Zug, thank you for the follow. Sorry I missed you, bud. Appreciate it greatly. Happy Wednesday to you. Happy Wednesday to everybody. Or Thursday, depending on your time zone. Sometimes we get Australian or New Zealand viewers. It's definitely tomorrow for them. Whoa, Cure with a nice combo. Karazim able to dash to an ally. Porky goes in with the flying kick. And there's an ally toss onto Deckard Kane. Li Ming finds a stray magic missile or arcane orb and takes down Stukov. Nicely done. A second kill over to the side of Crankle Crew. We're looking to shut down this gam this uh this bounty attempt from the dudes. Good gambles, really good gambles. Thank you, chat. Seriously. Y'all have y'all have been so generous to me today. The follows, the resubs, the gifted subs, y'all have been so generous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're just we just still need to see a tier two and tier three sub alert. Because I know people will enjoy it. Immortal will be picked up by the side of Crankle Crew, but they may lose Porky here. They're going to lose Porky here. Wait a second, the armor. Wait a second. Karazim goes in and gets the autos needed. And Li Ming doesn't get a counter kill. Garrosh goes down as well. How massively unfortunate for Crankle Crew. Hey, thank you for the follow. Uh... Uh, Campfee? Campfee now? I'm sorry if I murdered your name. If that's not how you pronounce it, it is now. Ooh, good spear into this uh, Zul'jin top lane. He goes down. And those four kills have yielded quite a bit of experience. Look at that. Look at that heroic difference right there. Two to four in kills and uh, over double the amount of experience coming through for uh, for the dudes. 
Scroll a ceiling from Deviant to try and create some space for Jordan to back away. There's going to be some healing debuff as well with that Emerald level 7. On to Karazim. Sonya with a slam. Chen with the elusive brawler. Gives him movement speed. On top of uh, avoiding some auto attack damage. I think it's 30%, right? Yeah, 30%. So basically his mount speed for 3 seconds. 2 seconds. Mount speed for 2 seconds there. Garrosh looking to step into the Vala here. Zul'jin drops his health with the Amani Rage. Sorry, I was, my brain always wants to say Armani. Man, if this game still had development, like, for skins and stuff, we could have had, like, Armani Zul'jin. <laughs> He's just decked out in some really fancy clothes. Oh, wait, hold on. Healing debuff. That's a four-second 75% healing debuff, and Karazim's able to dash through so much of it. Decker King being thrown in. Scroll, or Sapphire applied, and it's Leeming getting a reset, but Marl is so low. No Tostitos available for Zula Jin, and he goes down. Death timers are relatively low, and the Immortal's gonna spawn soon. Ultralis with a perfect little wiggle away from Cure's combination, while Swamp Grata pushes top lane. Three to six in kills, and ten talents here are gonna be coming through faster for the dudes as we cycle through those uh, mid-game numbers for the damage, healing, and experience, but Zul'jin is scaling. He's 26 stacks, so it's not too bad. Ten's on the right, Wrath of Berserker. It is Stim, as I was anticipating, for the Vala. Flailing Swipe, Seven-Sided Strike, and the, you heard the Wrath of Berserker, but First half of the Immortal quickly over to the side of Crankle Crew. As now... Or sorry, uh, to, the, to the dudes. Crankle Crew just trying to back away and find their 10 talents here. Maybe even a kill into Karazine, but he's got too much mobility. And now Zul'jin will work on the health of this Immortal, but there's no way they win the race. He throws clothes at you. <laughs> So camp over here on the left was tagged, and it looks like right side as well. Gaff is going to hearth out for full mana. Oh, man, cordless. That's 10 out of 10. Zul'jin throwing price tags instead of axes. You want sale? That's that's really good. That 10 out of 10 on that one, bud. Looking to take down Karazim, he activates the seven-sided strike. Seowon, listen. Wave of force from Li Ming. Some well taps coming out from our blue squad. Nano, or excuse me, Stim onto our Vala right now. And she's trying to avoid tanking too many tower shots here. Garrosh angling for a flank, but Karazim jumps onto him with a few autos to zone. Top lane fort being worked on by Sonya. Chen defending that, or at least trying to. Wandering Keg, yeah, Wandering Keg level 10, Wave of Force, Stay Well and Listen, Warlord's Challenge, and uh, Tostingo for our Zul Gym. But as we like to lovingly call on our, lovingly call it on our stream, the Tostitos. We make up names for things that we uh, sometimes can't remember, like Spinny Shooty Shot for Vala. Strafe. Or Big Slappy Ghost for our, uh, for our Nazebo instead of Ravenous Spirit. Oh, Garazim will almost go down right there. Zul'jin's on 33 stacks, almost nine minutes in. Big Arcane Orb from Li Ming, but Vala's able to vault away. Garrosh tanks a few seven-sided strikes, or a few strikes from the seven side. Grenade coming out as well. Morrow able to back away, but it looks like bottom lane fort is going to be forfeit. Meanwhile, up in top lane, Swamp and Porky just going back and forth. Do you see a rotation coming into top lane, but I think it's just to get this camp realistically. Whew. Things are looking a little sketchy here on the left-hand side. And 13 talent here for the dudes faster as well, so this is... Crankle Crew probably turtled up. I don't think they're going to try and take a fight around the objective area. They're not going to win the race, so it's it's like, what do you do? Do you just 
Do you just go and soak for 13, give the Immortal away, and let defend in top? Or it looks like they're setting up for a defense. That's a good combination onto Karazim. Big Warlord's Challenge afterwards. They're looking to take this fight down 13 talent here. And Karazim goes down. That's a reset for Cure. Spear from Sony in the back line. She also has Wrath Berserker active. Spinning through. Stay well. Listen, it's not good, but Cure's able to blink over towards a health potion. Stim gonna be expiring soon. Toss Dingo activated by Sol Jin and he gets the turn of tables. Taken down Sonya. A double kill for the members of Crankle Crew and they needed that. They needed that double kill so bad. Experience gap is starting to close. 13 talent here is here. You got the eye of Zul Jin. Basic attacks against enemy heroes. Grant Zul Jin 6% movement speed for two seconds up to 30%. And for those that may be new to Heroes of Storm or don't know, the mount speed is, is 130%. So basically, you do enough autos, you can chase someone at mount speed. <laughs> Another combination on to Karazim. He goes for the seven-sided strike. The pain's going to be shared by the allies. Wandering Keg splits Ultralisk, and Zul'jin keeps donating access to the face. That's going to be a flailing swipe into Vala damage. Deviant goes down as well. And now things were looking good have immediately flipped on the side of Crankle Cruz. Zul Jin trying to get those last axes in, but Stukov weighted pustule. I need to know, I need to know for chat. 15 overkill with the weighted pustule activation. Youch. That is how the kids say giga unfortunate. Massively unfortunate right there. Okay, so Garrosh once again in the flank. This is the Indomitable activated. But Jordan's taking so much damage, he's got to make something happen. He gets a little blood craze off the enemy. Blood thirst, I mean. Heals up a bit. Weighted push will disconnect. Lands the Groundbreaker. Lurking arm, hungering arrow, but it looks like Garrosh will be fine for the time being. Top lane fort does go down. Sonya split pushing in bottom. And it looks like the keep front gate will take some damage. And that's the end of that. Now, with the multiple kills that just came through, the experience lead has gone over the side of the dudes. And it's about to be 16 talent here for our red squad. And they don't want to let a fight happen down 16 talent here. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Things are looking sketchy for Crankle Crew and I don't know what they're going to do. Ohio? No one wants to be in Ohio. People who live in Ohio don't want to even be in Ohio. There's like one good thing in Ohio, and that's Cedar Point. Alright, Siege in bottom lane with the Impaler Camp and Catapult coming through. Zul'jin a little low, but he'll be fine for the time being. Arcanite Axe is being thrown out. Or the cleave going out. No Arcanite Axe level 4 picked up. That's going to be Vala. Throw it out of position. The stay wild. Listen, it's huge. It's absolutely massive. Ancient Blessings activation. Cure blinks away as well. Here comes Chen. He's got Wandering Keg available. Li Ming will be traded. But seven-sided strike. Stim onto Stukov. And the Morales is split from her team. Uh, they're not going to focus onto her. Looks, oh, wait, no, no. Things are turning around. Tostingo has to be activated. He's going to look to try and trade here, but Zul Jin goes down. What is happening? How is it all falling apart? 53 stacks on our Zul Jin. Now, of course, no 16 talent here, but still. That Vala kill should have been a snowball of kills. But it's not. And our next immortal phase is here. It's already begun getting burned down by the members of the dudes. As Ch Porky's chilling over here. We got Garrosh on the north side. Li Ming coming back in. Zul'jin up in nine seconds. Porky, he's dead. Oh, he's not. Oh, he's not. What's up, Andy? How you doing, bud? Happy Wednesday to you, my friend. Cedar Point, it's literally on the water trying to peel away from Ohio. How <laughs> 
Cedar Point is like it's it's a really it's a really really cool place. I haven't been there in s probably ten years at this point. Eight for sure. I don't think I went the last couple like I didn't go close to when I left Michigan in 2017. I probably th I think the last time I went was like 2015 realistically, like right after I graduated university. Maybe I went in 16, but either way. I want to go back for Hollow Weekends, man. Hollow Weekends is the jam. Wandering Keg activated by the Chen. Kind of a lull in our fight. We have the Stim activated onto Vala. Karazim immediately coming in with some punches. Big scroll of ceiling. Ancient Blessings activated. Say well on this end. Locks down the Sonya, but Zul'jin with an auto immediately wakes her up. Porky trying to back away in the Chen with the Elusive Brawler. There's a taunt onto ta Sonya. Great groundbreaker onto Karazim. The healing beam from Morales is good, and Vala still raining in damage. Gotta be careful of that Manticore level 16. As Gaff gets dove on, Reign of Vengeance to zone the enemies back. There is a decent wave on bottom keep. Well, actually near bottom keep, but there's no catapult to splash onto the minion wave. So things are looking good, and maybe, just maybe, this immortal phase goes over to Cr Crankle Crew. I say maybe because we see this rotation in. That's gonna be a good toss onto Karazim. Doesn't look like he's trying to dive away very quickly. Porky with the wandering keg! And that'll be a kill onto Karazim. Morales and Vala stuke off to defend. This could be huge for Crankle Crew to take us to that map three. Currently have the Immortal with 24,200 points of, sh of HP. We'll see the shielding in a moment when it gets into lane. 862 damage standard and 1,724 damage into structures. Fun fact, the Immortal does uh, 9,482 damage to minions. One of my favorite places, and I live one hour from Six Flags. I've never been to Six Flags. My dad and I would always go to Cedar Point. It was like our father-son trip every summer. And there was one summer where he's like, do you want to go to Six Flags? And I was like, let's just go to Cedar Point. We did talk about it for like a couple weeks. But in the end, we were just like, we love Cedar Point. We know it's going to be fun. We just go to the place we know will be fun. I think the reason we were talking about it because, like, Cedar Point hadn't put out a new roller coaster. I think it was, like, a little bit after Top Throw Dragster. But before Maverick, I think. I might be misremembering coasters, but still. Immortal pushing in towards the core. Stim activated on Davala. But that, I think, is the red light for the members of Crankle Crew. They're going to back away. Karazim dives in. The Wandering Keg trying to split the Stuke off. Karazim, we thrown out of position. Big stay while and listen. We'll be met by the seven-sided strike. Warlord's challenge. And that'll be Karazim going down. You used to work at Cedar Point. I've, I, I've, I've heard that it's, like, not that good for the employees, though, is it? Like, isn't it just, like, a lot of, like, underpaid college kids? Or am I, or, or am I, did I get false information? Uh, Vala and Karazim are down. Jordan trying to zone. Sonya spears in. Decker Kane applies a emerald to that. Haradra cube. Zul Jin activates Tostingo. They want this. And it looks like, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to a map number three. Crankle Crew, they're not done with this series. They want to go to the grand finals up next. And, well, we're in a best of one now. I think I know Cedar Point from Roller Coaster Tycoon. Is there a reference to Cedar Point and Roller Coaster Tycoon? I think there's a level called Cedar something. Aren't all theme perks like that? Uh, probably. It was fun if you're young, yeah. Cause like I think like I, I think I read like the the dormitories that they have for Cedar Point are not very good. Like the 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 not on site, but there's like there's like dormitories. Like I always remember, you turn left. There's like one last left we would make, and it would always be right by like the housing for the Cedar Point employees or whatever. And I swore I read like a news article that it's like ads are done, map is ready to go, and map number three in our third best of three of the day. Up next is the grand finals. Up next is our grand finals. Heck yeah, here we go. Garden of Terror will be this uh, map number three. We've got Crankle Crew on the left. We've got uh, the dudes on the right. And Crankle Crew did shut down the triple healer composition of the dudes. Now, keep in mind, every hero that's been played in the series so far is unavailable for future maps. So that means as we get into this draft, 20 of the 90 heroes are already banned away. And of course, we have bans at the top of the screen. So by the time we get into the draft phase, 24 heroes are going to be banned away. And we'll see what the limited pool looks like. Now... 
Garden of Terror, fantastic map for a Cho'Gal. We have had the dudes banning out Cho'Gal consistently as the Sergeant Hammer Lucio will be removed. Do have the Johanna and will they get rid of the Cho'Gal here? Is it going to be, ooh, Abathur being removed, okay. No Abathur for shenanigans for Garden of Terror. Now they can't start out with the Cho'Gal here. You need two slots to pick it. I feel like, I honestly, I feel like the dudes might be the ones taking the Cho'Gal here. I, I, maybe, maybe the dudes are going to take Cho'Gal. This is the first map they haven't banned it. Uh, we didn't see any dude games earlier. But Kira is going to get a comfort pick on this Maev. Kira's Maev is uh, fairly good. Uh, can still also swap to someone else if maybe like Porky or Marl Karx wants to grab that. And then uh, Porky could consider, not Porky, Z uh, Kira could consider Zeratul. It's a very strong hero for him. The only issue with Zeratul is uh, he's playing on high ping. And I don't think the ping is going to be an issue for Kira. He has been practicing on EU quite a bit. Um, but it still is this something to note. He's playing from the central United States. So his ping is still pretty pretty high up there. I'd say it's probably around like 150, 160. Uh, if, if mine's about 190 and I'm a few states west of him. Actually, more than a few. I think I'm... I'm no, I'd say, yeah, I'm a few states away from him. Tracer Brightwing on the right. Okay. All right, so sustain damage is pretty good. What do they want to roll in with that Brightwing Tracer? Maybe one team will go no healer now. Uh, I don't know if you want to risk that in a game three, but no Cho'Gal on the left-hand side. There is still the setup on the right. Granted, Brightwing Hypershift was nerfed in our patch on Monday. If you'd like to know more about the patch, exclamation patch. I do have a YouTube video going through that where people immediately ask me, is this game still alive? And of course, yes, if I'm doing a patch review video from August 12, 2024, yeah, I'm assuming the game is still alive. Just, I'd, I'd go on a limb and guess that one. Uh, Nitram, thank you for the follow. Glad you're enjoying the content, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Furion banned away. With the Varian, I would expect some sort of mage, like a Chromie, uh, to be picked up here. I don't think Jane has been played in the series either, so you could, you know, charge, taunt, burst damage from a mage. Mephisto hasn't been played, and he's pretty good as well. Mephisto is quite good. Hogger to be removed. And is this going to be the snap pickup for Chogol? They got to do it here if they want it. Tracer Brightwing isn't too bad for uh, the composition, though Garden of Terror is a heavy macro map, and maybe they just want to lean into, like, a gray main or something that can grab camps, Tracer can grab camps, pick up a good tank, and then a solo laner with that as well. I don't hate that idea. Yeah, Sylvanas and Arthas. Okay. Happy to see the Arthas. He did get buffed in uh, a patch or so ago, so not this most recent one, but the, the one before that. Uh, and we have been seeing a bit more of him. Now, Arthas has the ability for auto attack and movement speed debuff, so I don't think you want to lean into a auto attacker on the left-hand side, but I don't think they were anyways. I, I realistically think this will be a healer and some sort of burst mage. That's what I would like to see personally. Uh, what are we going to get, though? So they're going to go Cassia. So they'll have blinds into Tracer Sylvanas. The Arthas, I mean, Cassie's got a bit of range, so she might be able to stay out of Arthas's uh, Frost uh, Storm. No, I'm blanking on the name of it. His E. Can't, Frozen Tempest, there we go. Last pick on the right-hand side. What are we going to get here? Hey, what's up, Potato Girl? Good to see you, my friend. Hey, Hazu. Aha, uh -huh, pumping big time today. I'm trying. I'm on front page of Twitch. I'm on front page of Twitch, so... But uh, Hazu, because of you, we are blessed with a murky. It's because of Hazu Ops. Everyone in chat, thank Hazu Ops for the murky. And yep, we're... Uh at the end of the grand finals up next, we'll be giving away uh, Corsair uh, M.2 one terabyte drive. So if you'd like to be entered into that, type the word HOTS into chat. Take a murky if we can't get a show goal. Exactly. Garfield, thank you for the uh, follow. What a name. 
Left side, we are taking a peek at Crankle Crew. They just fought back through Battlefield of Eternity to keep the series alive. Winner of this goes into the Grand Finals up next. We got Akira Maev, Deviant Anduin, Marl playing that Cassia. We'll be seeing Porky on the Dahaka, and last but not least, Jordan playing your Varian. Right side of the map, we have our dudes, Ultralisk with Arthas, Swamp Grata playing Murky, which is a potential bounty if they win. Our Brightwing Ixer, Gaff on this Five, Tracer, and last but not four, least, of course, Blood three, is your Sylvanas. Two, uh, looks like we got positioning in bottom lane from both sides, anticipating the Sylvanas early shenanigans. So we know that rotation's happening there. Let's go ahead and take a look back and forth between visions here. Sylvanas is immediately scouted, gets the Haunting Wave away. No Umbral Bind to be applied from Cure. As he mounts up, gets dismounted almost immediately, looking for some fan and ivory sets off of Sylvanas and Tracer. Meanwhile, Murky, Murky placing his egg aggressively. He went into Bribe level 1, by the way, so he's going to want to kill minions with his Pufferfish, but Tahaka's going to make really quick work of that. Honestly, I don't think Murky's going to want to be against Tahaka, but, I mean, realist, uh, yeah, I, I don't think he's going to get much Bribe stackage. We'll, we'll check on those stacks as the game progresses. I do want to point out, though, we are starting to see the shift from our Brightwing players as Hyper Shift was nerfed in the most recent patch on Monday, and now we're having Greater Polymorph level 1. We'll talk about that in a second, because I think we might have... Nope, looks like the team fight's going to expire here in bottom lane. Will we get Twin Blades? I doubt it. I doubt it. With a level 1 on Lion's Maul, I think realistically, Crankle Crew, they want to win this map and go to the Grand Finals so they can get at minimum, seven points for their qualifiers. Potentially ten. Ah, see Murky's proxying waves. Murky's proxying waves, but unfortunately, Dahaka's gonna scout him out. He's not gonna find the egg. Murky's trying to pull Dahaka away from that one bush. Drag goes fishing, but no one found. Charge in from Cassia. Divine Star from Anduin. No follow-up. And still the murky egg not discovered on the left-hand side. Okay. Uh, what is greater polymorph, by the way? So you increase the polymorph range by 30%. If Brightwing hits an enemy hero with Arcane Flare's center within two seconds of being polymorphed, then reduce polymorph's cooldown by seven seconds and gain 50 mana. Speaking of Brightwing, trying to heal up this Arthas, but it looks like there should be enough damage to take him. No. Ah, Kira with the Phantom Knives over the wall gets the kill. And first blood, first full blood goes over to Crankle Crew. Who wants to win things? Com competitive players, I guess. Murky all alone in top lane. Let's check really quickly what his stackage looks like. He's got four stacks on Bribe. Gonna pick up a few more here in top lane. Right wing, Chassia with the fend in. Looking to take down this fairy dragon, but Arthas is back, lands the Howling Blast, picks up another stack on his level one. Oh, Tracer goes in, they're trying to take, take, uh, take down this Cassian, will be able to do so. Anduin falls next, Tracer won't be able to make it a triple kill, but still a double kill coming through for the dudes. And that's a nice turn in this bottom lane to start maybe sieging against the enemy, granted. Our first seed is up and available on the top, or the bottom right. Meanwhile, Murky Egg, where is it hiding? It's over here now, okay. So still just clearing waves, allowing his to crash into the fort front gate and top, and actually getting some decent value. Meanwhile, on bottom, a taunt from Varian into Ultralisk, who gets the face shift from Brightwing, Howling Blast out from Arthas as well. If you don't go Windblades, can you really call yourself a winner? You know, AJ, that's a very good point. What a great point. Uh, Murky did bribe the camp. He doesn't have any cooldown shenanigans on camps like Nova does. As we jump back into bottom over here, a lot of damage onto Jordan, the Varian. He's going to try and pick up another stack on his Lion's Maw, but he still gets taken down. One to three in kills as Tracer Gaff is able to recall really quickly after providing some sustained damage. Meanwhile, Cure gets the Spirit of Vengeance teleport activation. Back by the fort front gate. Dahaka working on that top lane. Siege Giants. Murky doing a bit of double soak duties for his team. And Svamp Grata, fantastic on this Murky right now. Bonk. 
Uh, murky stackage, I'm just curious. 18, oh, it's nine per bribe, right? Eight per bribe. So he can bribe two units. He could bribe a Siege Giant camp right now. Tracer mid lane lands the Pulse Bomb onto our Maev, and she gets the Vault of the Wardens to be able to mitigate that damage. And 10 Talenteers are coming up soon, a little bit faster for the dudes. So we'll cycle through the other numbers for the bottom of your screen. My little seed is on the verge of sprouting. Prepare to gather it. That Brightwing level one must be a misclick. Nope. Hyper Shift was nerfed in our most recent patch. Thank you, uh, Freaky. Okay, so we'll find out faster on the right-hand side what our tens will be. Murky just constantly making Dahaka's life a bit miserable up here. Tracer, hold on, wait a minute. Taunt into a, ch oh, the recall avoids the chastise, but that recall was in the same spot. Tracer's gonna try and blink away to the left-hand side and get out of this, and seems like they actually they give up. They give up the ghost on this. Fan of knives. Uh, Kier wants wants to chase down the Tracer, but has to avoid some of that sustained damage. Tracer blinks in. Little auto attack in onto Kier. Polymorph by the Bright Wing. Recall from Tracer to Haka. Brush stalking into bottom lane. Varian comes through with the charge into Bright Wing. Taunt onto the Tracer. Pulse Bomb, Sticky Bomb. Is that bigger AoE. You can see the slow fend in from Cassie, avoided by a blink heal from the Bright Wing. Syndragosa, mind you, for the Arthas. We have Murky with Octograb, and that is also going to be Wailing Arrow from our Sylvanas. Octograb used at some point. Uh, it's a low cooldown of 50 seconds. Could see Wrath of Cod later on, potentially, for our Murky. Wrath of Cod for extra damage paired well into the Octograb combo. Tracer gets the recall. No kill found. Ball Lightning, Containment Disc. We have Varian with Warbringer level 10, so we can charge every four seconds with Light Bomb from the end of an Isolation to Haka. As he's going to get hit with a Howling Blast, activate some Essence. Polymorphed. Murky Egg does get taken down. And, uh, uh can he get behind the gate? Taunt. Murky, full death timer. Charge in from Varian, ball lightning from Cassia going out, the light bomb's gonna be there, Soothing Mist will be the answer right back into that light bomb activation. Varian's done with his level one, taunts right onto the bright wing, she gets a blink away! And no fan of knives, no Loon's Wrath level seven to take her down, but actually bright wing almost goes down, she blinks over to a minion, there's gonna be a number of blind to pull, Arthas back, and he does fall. To the damage of Cassia, as Crankle Crew look to open up mid lane a little bit more. All right, so our 13s will be here a little bit faster on the right-hand side. Uh, Haka working on a wave. We've got Murky still proxying and pushing. And let's see really quickly his uh, bribe stacks. He's currently got 20, getting close to a uh, four camp bribe. Let's see, we'll be taken down in top lane, but... Oh, his egg is way far away. Oh, bit of a rotation there from Murky. Howling Blast into the Arth or into the uh, Varian as Arthas looks to chase in. 15 stacks on his level one on the uh, Frost Presence and the Frozen Waste at 117 out of 150. Black Arrows from Sylvanas activated. Trying to siege onto this top lane fort and take it down. Arthas stepping up into Varian. Good slows applied. There was also the Sticky Bomb. Wonderful Syndragosa just as the Containment Disc connects. Allowing the team to dive in faster, and Sylvanas with the Wailing Arrow coming through. Cure locked in place by a root. Can they take down Cure as well? Ball Lightning from Cassia activated. Looks like there's a little bit of volleyball between Brightning and Sylvanas. The drag from Dahaka is wonderful. The Umbra Bind from Cure pulls Ultralis into the tower shots of the fort of the keep front gate. Unfortunately, the Varian will not be able to live there. Hey Coleo, what's up, bud? Happy Wednesday to you. Essence activated by Dahaka. Gaff now trying to get away. Keep in mind, Gaff is on the left side of the map and uh, shouldn't be. <laughs> Not with that many enemy heroes around, but there's good mobility from Tracer. She's able to blink away and Murky's going to be enough pressure in bottom lane 
to pull the enemies off that, that little chase. Danger pings. Murky, is he going to try and pressure onto Anduin with an Octograb or anything? Doesn't look like it. Gather the seed before your enemy does. Okay. Oh, charge, taunt, dead Murky. 21 stacks, by the way, on his bribe. Egg's still back at the Hall of Storms over here. Tracer harassing onto this Dahaka. Haunting wave in. Leap of faith to pull Porky to safety. You thought this game was no longer supported? You unfortunately thought wrong, my friend. Unfortunately, you thought wrong. So murky in bottom lane. He'll soak this up, push things out. Looking for 16 talents here on both sides. Hot's janitor. You mean you mean the dev that's working on the game that people call a janitor, which is kind of an insult, but you know, whatever. <laughs> That was Murky's prison, and he does go down five stacks on his slime. He did go into toxic buildup at level 16. I have been I have been streaming and casting Heroes of the Storm for multiple years, um, like almost six days a week. <laughs> I've been here for a very long time. So if you enjoy HOTS, if you enjoy casting, if you enjoy good streams, be sure to drop a follow. Sindragosa for the Arthas is summoned here. Jordan getting really low. The Leap of Faith onto Very Impulse into safety. We currently have an Umbral Bind and a Taunt onto the Tracer who gets the recall. The Light Bomb zones, but it still hits the Arthas. The Ball Lightning from Cassia coming out. Broken away by the Tracer. She moved out of the engagement. Huge Wailing Air from Sylvanas. Unfortunately, no follow-up kill to be achieved. Our next seed is in the top right, and it will be a Garden Terror for the side of the dudes. I don't think... Wait, hold on. Some well taps were had. Doesn't look like Mark Murky gets the channel fast enough. Actually, it looks like, yes, Murky will get the channel. No interrupt onto him. Garden Terrors will be summoned over to the side of the dudes. And the dudes with some pretty good siege here. Octograb down for 12 more seconds. You didn't mean to insult them? No, you're good. I just, I, I just, I was, we were talking about this yesterday during stream, and I was mentioning, I was just like, janitors are considered, like, looked down upon. Now, there are nice people out there that treat janitors well. Don't get me wrong. But janitors are typically looked down upon, and I was thinking about it, I was just like, we should not be calling the one or two people working on this game still janitors. We should call them, like, the savior developers. <laughs> That's, we should really be, we should really be amplifying the hard work they do for a game that a lot of us love. Now, are we going to get a new hero? Are we going to get new skins? No. Nah. But we have small patches, we have small changes, and that invigorates the meta. At least we hope it does. IDK what's happening, but it's Porky's fault. Yeah, that's typically a good answer into things. Typically blame Porky, yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Porky coming through. Lands the dragon to Arthas. Cleansed away by Brightwing. The light bomb doesn't connect. Good attempt, but didn't work out. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Lilac. Holding up the Nexus on their backs. Exactly. Murky pushes top lane wave in. Keep is going to be going down to the minion wave. The slow burn of this Murky composition is starting to uh, work out for the dudes quite well, especially after that Garden Terror phase. Only one fort has been lost in the bottom lane for the dudes as they're on the trajectory for a map or for uh, to head into the grand finals up next. A lot of small bug fixes. Yep, that too. That too. Should we call them the Hots Neo, our savior? I like that as well. Yeah. Exactly, Cav. My back. Oh, my back. Those are the Hots devs saving the game right there. <laughs> 20 talent here on the right-hand side about to be coming through. We got Hush for the Bright Wing. Good synergy with that level four for the extra range as well with the uh, Dream Shot. Also helps it with that level one. Since the dream shot gives you a little bit more range. Right, 
They really do. They really do, Kev. Uh, Murky in bottom lane, pushing up against the Dahaka. Octograb is available. A drag from Dahaka. He's just pulling a Siege Giant in. Safely clearing up against the Murky. Charge. Taunt. Mortal Wound from level 13 from Varian. He's actually Glor He's actually uh, Banner of Stormwind. Don't see this very often, but I mean, mobility utility to either chase down or run away from the enemy. Uh, what's Varian's build path? I used to main him when I played. This is a uh, this is pretty common build. The only difference is the level thirteen, uh, the level sixteen. Typically, we see banner of Dalaran or banner of Ironforge, depending on what you need. Uh, banner of Dalaran gives you spell power, or ally you and allies inside the AOE get uh, spell power. Ironforge is gonna give armor, speed. Obviously, Stormwind is speed. The level 13, uh, Mortal Wound is fairly common. 40% healing reduction for 4 seconds. Uh, with the level 10 Warbringer, oftentimes we see Juggernaut. But that's usually when you have multiple bruisers. And realistically, there's only one high health pool hero on the right side, being Arthas. Because Juggernaut is 4% of the maximum health as damage. And of course, the Warbringer level 4, or level 10, allows you to have a charge every 4 seconds. So basically, you can deal 4% max HP as damage every 4 seconds. But the Mortal Wound I like because you can reduce the Brightwing phase shift uh, healing potential. Or even just the a the you know passive healing from Brightwing. Umbral Bind from Maya, pulling people around. The containment is coming out, but no connection onto the enemy as Ultralis will get the phase shift from Brightwing. Dragosa for the Arthas. He has the absolute zero level 20 as well. Murky level 20 is going to be big kahuna tuna. Just skimming through the 20s. Apex Predator is a unique one for Dahaka, but I'm not too surprised because it looks like he's wants to get around the map very quickly and manage what Murky keeps pushing up. So being able to brush duck every 25 seconds with a faster animation is not a bad pickup. Speaking of Dahaka, 12 seconds to go on his death timer. We do have one keep down from Crankle Crew. Stormwind gives you wind. Stormy wind. Yes, exactly. Uh, but th this level 20 is pretty common as well. Glory to the Alliance is actually very, very good. I, I don't see many variants picking anything but this at level 20. Uh, Banner now also increases health regeneration and all healing received from uh, nearby allied heroes by 50%. And the cooldown is reduced by 100%. So wave in top lane, crashing near the core, but no catapult here, so no, nothing to really worry about in that lane. Dahaka will drag the catapult into the minion wave, using the Dark Swarm to clear that out as well. Jordan, thought about jumping under the camp. Octo grab with the puffer fish underneath, and a containment disc will be thrown out. Drag from Dahaka on the left-hand side, and that was actually the the little bug fix on Dahaka with his drag, where now his drag and, and like the, the movement speed is now working better with his drag or something. I didn't, I didn't phrase that very well, but you can see he's actually getting way faster drags, or at least the animation is a lot smoother. It might be the exact same, but the animation, because before you'd have that sort of like multiple sort of like bouncing uh, noises from the drag, kind of like pulling the unit, and then it's stopping, then pulling it again. This doesn't seem like that's the case anymore. But I don't know if it's actually getting a faster drag or a further distance. That's the only thing I haven't tested yet. I don't know if someone in chat has. Okay, so our Murky. Uh, let's just check really quickly and see how many stacks he's got. Five stacks on that. Looks like we've got a seed given away. Didn't like the positioning over here on the bottom right, and I can't blame them. Six to seven in kills. How many Murky deaths have we had? Uh, we've had nine Murky deaths, if my caster math is correct. Catapult has arrived at core. Minion wave spawning. Don't think they're going to be rushing back to go deal with that anytime soon. Next seed is a neutral top center position. And Minion Wave will make quick work of this catapult. And Dahaka will clear out the wave with the help of Cassia after the siege camp is grabbed. Murky's still pushing up bottom lane. Mayav may be able to get a kill onto him. Where is Murky's egg? It's in mid lane fort area, as you can see on your mini map. Containment disc with the extra silence. There's a taunt as well. The chastise not connecting. Sentry was a level 20, but Murky... 
will go down. Keep in mind, Big Kahuna Tuna does increase the death timer of Murky. It doubles it, actually. I think it takes it from 8 to 10 seconds. Or 8 to, eight to 16 seconds, sorry. Yeah, 8 seconds. Charge, taunt, mortal wound. Tracer jumps into the back line with a pulse bomb and the get stuffed level 20 upgrade. Gaff has to break away as we do have a huge Cinder Ghost Absolute Zero with the root as well. Anduin goes down first. Sylvanas with the Will of Forsaken trying to get to a safer position. Marl Karx gets the ball lightning out, but it looks like it got canceled immediately or something. Not 100% sure about that moment right there, but Porky goes down. Cure will fall. And that right there is a... To wrap up this map number three, ladies and gentlemen, the dudes are heading into the grand finals. Coming up next here in Murky Cup qualifier number three. And uh, once again, thanks to Hazuobs, we get a Murky. The bounty is picked up by the side of the dudes. And what an interesting day of games. But we still have another series on the way. GG well played. The dudes take this semifinal matchup. His drag is to say, yeah, yeah. That Sindragosa won the game. Yeah. As they say, you pick Sindragosa if you want to win. You pick Army of the Dead if you want to try and be a tank. <laughs> Wait, camps are still up. Yeah, that's true. Camps were still up right there. Gotta get those C maps. Uh, play out the people. The dudes did win that one. So let's get set up for our next uh, series. Grand Finals.